All right, everyone. Well, wrapping up this whole marathon of summing up the year 2021 and looking into 2022, this time with video games. Yep, as you'd expect, my most anticipated video games of 2022. And as I said with the movies, release dates are always subject to change. And don't be surprised again if you see video games that I've anticipated the last few years to make it this list as well, because, well, it could always change. But remember, a delayed video game is always better than a rushed game. I mean, you can learn from these games as well. So, yep, let's get to it here, people. Wrap up this year, starting with number 10, Lego Star Wars Skywalker Saga. Do I have to say much more about this one? I mean, I've already anticipated it for the past several years, and I'm anticipating it again, especially for the Nintendo Switch, to be able to take it on the go. So, yeah, if you see my reviews on all the LEGO Star Wars games, I enjoyed the hell out of them, even though I'm not a diehard fan of this franchise. Yeah, but it's great to see that they're finally having acknowledgement for Episodes 8 and 9, even though they're not the best in the series. But hey, Episodes 1 and 2 weren't great, but they still make great games out of them. And it's great to see that they're going to bring all those, Episodes 1, 2, and 3, the classics 4, 5, and 6, and 7, 8, and 9, all together and one game collection to be released on multiple consoles, including the Nintendo Switch, so you already know which one I'm going to go for. No brainer right there, to be able to take it on the go and play it at home. Number 9, Mario Rabbids Sparks of Hope. Yep, the Mario Rabbids crossover series is getting a sequel and continuing on, and in case you don't know, I actually enjoyed this game quite a bit. It's different. You know, being that I was a bit skeptical on seeing a crossover with Mario in another franchise, but it actually worked in a way. Sort of an RPG-ish mechanics and uh, stuff that you really have to get used to, and I'm expecting a lot more out of this one. So, yeah, I'm interested to see how Nintendo and Ubisoft can do when worlds collide once again. So, don't let us down again. I'm really hoping this is a great one just like the last one. Number 8. Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. Yeah, that's right, the Suicide Squad is now getting their own game, and no, this is not movie licensed, even though the cover does look like it's going to be sort of basing it on the newest Suicide Squad movie, which was really great, by the way, a great reboot, slash soft sequel, whatever the hell you would call it. It definitely is, does a lot better than the 2016 film, by all means. It was funny, it was action-packed, it was gory, had a lot of cursing in it. And I'm expecting a lot of the same for this game, with Rocksteady, the same company that made most of the Arkham games, as well as Warner Brothers, butting heads, and we can only hope for the best out of this one, especially being able to play as pretty much all the characters, like Harley Quinn and all the other ones that you're well familiar with. Maybe the Joker will be in there, maybe not. I'm not sure if it's going to uh, exist in the same universe as the Batman Arkham series, but... One thing I do have to pinpoint is, is that no, from what I've heard, it's not going to be available on the PS4 or Xbox One. It's making the leap, doing the same as Batman Arkham Knight did when it came out. Yep, I had to get the newer next generation console, so you have to get the Xbox Series X or PS5. And from what I've heard, it's also going to be available on PC, but I usually never bother with those versions if they're on consoles. So the bottom line is... Gotta get the next generation console, even though they're very tough to find still. But, don't give up, people. And I think this game is gonna be great. You already know which version I'm obviously gonna go for when it comes out, and if it comes out this year. So, don't let us down, Rocksteady. Do a great job. Number 7, God of War Ragnarok. Do I have to say much more again? Not really. I already anticipated this one from last year, and it got pushed to this year. Maybe that's a good thing, because, like I said many times before, and I'll say it again, the more time and effort they put into a game, the better it will be. And let's hope for the sake it applies for this one. I already praised the hell out of the last entry in the series, which is basically a soft sequel slash reboot, and it did a fantastic job, especially with the absence of the fixed camera positions, which, don't get me wrong, the previous entries in the series were great, but the fixed camera positions were kind of a problem. The newest one takes the necessary step in making it a worthy reboot on the PlayStation 4. So, yeah, if you want these games, you gotta get a PlayStation. I'm not sure if it's gonna be on both PS4 and PS5, but I, I would assume at this point it's gonna be on PS5 at least, and you already know which version I'm gonna go for. It's a no-brainer right there, since I just got one last July. But yeah, 
I think it's going to be great. And yes, again, I find it funny how it deals with God of War and has sort of the same subtitle name as the third Thor movie, being that he's also kind of a god too. So I don't think it's kind of a connection. I think it's rather a paradox right there. But don't let us down again, Sony. I have faith in you. Number six, Saints Row. That's going to be the title of the game so far, and, well, it's going to be a reboot to the series, and the trailers don't look bad at all. I know, this one's basically a THQ ripoff of Grand Theft Auto, but I did enjoy those games for some of their uniqueness and interesting and original ideas that they do come up with. I mean, they add some humor in there, they add some real weird stuff as well, and I enjoyed the hell out of the third and fourth one especially, so... Who knows what necessary steps they're going to take in this franchise. I think it's going to be good. And it, I would assume it's going to have a really good open world system as well as being released on PS5, I would imagine, is going to look great for this game. So, again, don't let us down. It may seem like a Grand Theft Auto ripoff, but hey, I've seen worse ripoffs than this. Number 5, Splatoon 3. Yeah, already? Yep. Took a couple of years for this game to get a sequel on the same console that it's on. Yeah, the first one was on the Nintendo Wii U, a rather forgotten about and thrown in the trash console due to its lackluster sales and third party support, but I still enjoyed that game. It was a lot of fun, especially playing online. And the same goes with the second one, and who knows what kind of new stuff they'll add with this one. I saw the trailer, so you already know how much of a fan I am of this game. I play it all the time, and I'll probably do the same with this one. I'm sure it'll have a really good single player mode as well as an awesome online mode. So, this should be an enjoyable array of paint and graffiti and all sorts of fun. Number 4, Kirby and the Forgotten Land. Yes, Nintendo's cute little iconic marshmallow is back to kick some more ass and this time it's going to actually be in 3D. So, I'm interested to see how Nintendo will pull this off. The trailers look amazing so far from Nintendo Direct, and I have plenty of faith in Nintendo on this one. I mean, they brought Mario, they brought Zelda, they brought Donkey Kong into 3D, so I think they could do the same with this one. Even though it took many years to really make it fully 3D and not 2.5D, which is basically what the N64 game was like and most of the other games were like, which I did enjoy the hell out of. I mean, the last good one that came out in 2018 was fun but simple, and I'm expecting this one to maybe be simple or maybe be more challenging. Who knows? All I know is, Kirby is back, and hopefully it'll be better than ever. Number 3, Bayonetta 3. Do I have to say much more there? I don't think I have to. It's been postponed for several years, and I'm sure if it's taking this long, it's going to be worth the wait, being that, it, from my knowledge, it's going to be a Nintendo Switch exclusive, Yes, you got the first two as a filler, but that was several years ago, back in 2018. We're still waiting for this one. So, if it's going to take this long, let's hope it's worth the wait. Let's hope this badass witch can come back and kick some more ass for a third time. Make third time a charm for Bayonetta, shall we? Number 2. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge. Yes, that's right. The Ninja Turtles have been an awesome franchise if you grew up in the 80s and 90s, you would know that. I know they were a little bit before my time, but I was old enough to remember watching the original cartoon series, which in my opinion is still the best one. And there's been revivals and reboots. I love the original two movies. The third one was crap. The 2007 one was okay. Yeah, I know. The films and the whole entire franchise in general with games and stuff hasn't quite been treated very well. It's been hit or miss over the years. And when it came to video games, my favorites are still Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3 Manhattan Project, Turtles in Time for Super Nintendo, which is one of the few console ports that outbeats its arcade counterpart, and the original arcade game that I still have on my Xbox 360. I mean, I just love the arcade-style beat-em-up type of games, but when they made their transition and tried new things, it didn't quite work out. I mean, sure, Smash Up is pretty good, but still, I wanted something to be able to take on the go on a newer console that reminds me of my childhood of when I enjoyed the original classics. That's right up my alley. And that's what this game looks like it's gonna be. I mean, yeah. We know Michael Bay destroyed the movie franchise. We know that most of these other studios have pretty much destroyed the franchise with some of these new crappy games, especially Mutants in Manhattan. 
But judging by the looks of these trailers, this game looks like it's going to bring the series back on the right track. I myself and all of us can hope for a few things that should be in this game. Number one, a local multiplayer. Yeah, we all know this is obviously going to have online multiplayer, like most games do, but like most games that have it, they cut out the local multiplayer. I mean, to be able to play in the same room, around the same TV, or a Nintendo Switch console, yes, this is going to be released on Nintendo Switch, so it's a no-brainer for me that I'm going to go for that version. But, come on, it has to have that kind of gameplay. I mean, like a party game. I remember playing Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3 and 4, two-player mode, and that's the way to go. Just like in the arcade versions that had the four-player co-op mode. I mean, that's how this game is meant to be played. Team Battle. All four Ninja Turtles, and yes, even going to have April O'Neil teaming up to kick some ass alongside with them. Which looks like they're going to bring back the more familiar villains as the boss fights that you remember from the original series. Like Bebop and Rocksteady, Krang, Shredder of course, I mean... It wouldn't be called Shredder's Revenge without Shredder, and many, many more. I mean, that's what we're all hoping for, us diehard fans. And, yeah, that's another thing that we really want to see out of this game. So, there you go right there. I have full faith that this game can bring the franchise back on the right track, and give us the Ninja Turtles game that us nostalgia fans of this franchise were dying to see. And to be able to take it on the go on the Switch, as I said before, can't ask for anything better. So, originally it was going to come out last year, but hey, let's let them put more time and effort into it, the finishing touches, to make it a cowabunga awesome time. So, don't let us down, Tribute Games and .emu. We know you can do a great job with this one. Alright, well, before I get to number one, a few honorable mentions that, well, mainly I anticipated for the past several years, I mean, it's becoming rather tiresome, and also the fact that they're not guaranteed to release this year, even though they got a trailer. I mean, I didn't see official release date. They may release this year, may not, but let's get to it. Evil Dead the Video Game. Okay, well, this one is definitely releasing this year in February to be exact, and it's not that I'm highly anticipating it. I mean, I love the Evil Dead movies, the first two to be exact, as well as the remake, which was pretty good. But movies based on video games are hit or miss. This one doesn't look bad. It looks promising, but I'm not getting my hopes sky high on this one. It is also releasing for the Nintendo Switch, so I played the Friday the 13th game. I'm hoping it can at least do better than that. So, whatever. I just want to see a lot of blood and gore. That's why I don't have my hopes sky high on this one. That's why it's an honorable mention. As well as Gotham Knights. Anticipated this one from last year. Who knows if it'll be released this year. Um, I mean, I really wanted to like and highly anticipate this one. But the Suicide Squad game is getting me really pumped. But who knows, maybe this will do just as good. Maybe not. I mean... The Gotham game without Batman taking place after the Arkham games, after the death of Bruce Wayne slash Batman. It could be good. Prove me wrong. Hopefully. Hogwarts Legacy. Yeah, it was supposed to come out last year, and I'm not a die-hard Harry Potter fan. I mean, I went to the Wizarding World and everything like that. I've seen pretty much every Harry Potter movie, the Fantastic Beasts movies and everything like that. And we got the third one coming out this year. So... This one actually looks pretty interesting. It's hit or miss with some of these games that are not technically movie licensed. They just happen to have that movie licensing, you know, being in their own thing. So it's going to, it's basically trying to be like Arkham City, the new Spider-Man game-ish with Harry Potter. An open world type of game. It could actually work. The graphics and the trailer look fantastic and it's going to be on the newer consoles. Obviously with the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X as well as the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. I don't imagine a Switch release coming. But then again, you never know. So let's hope they bring some wizarding magic into this one and make it worth the wild. Metroid Prime 4. I'm highly anticipating this one, but then again, after the last Metroid game, I'm not sure if Nintendo is putting their focus a lot on this one. I mean, it's been delayed for several years, and I really want it to be released, but who knows if we're going to get it this year. That's why it's, again, on this honorable mention spot. I really do want it to, and it would be nice to have the Metroid Prime Trilogy on Switch, just like they release a bunch of other remasterings or remakes on the Switch. 
So, who knows if we'll get this one or not. The more time they put into it, if it has to get pushed till next year, so be it, Nintendo. They take their time and make sure these games are great. Skull and Bones. Boy, you'd be tired of talking about this one year after year, right? And I sure am, and I really do want to play this one. The trailers and everything once again look great. I'm sounding like an old broken record, matey. But still, I love pirate adventures. I loved Assassin's Creed 4, as I mentioned many times. Who knows if we'll get this one this year. Sonic Frontiers. Yes, that's the title of this game, apparently. And yes, Sega is once again throwing their hats in at rebooting one of their most beloved and iconic franchises and mascots of all time. We all know that Sonic the Hedgehog has not exactly had the best history, especially when making its leap into the third dimension. It was anything but smooth. Of course, the two adventure games on Sega Dreamcast were awesome. We can't argue with those facts. But then, when it came to the Xbox 360 and PlayStation and Nintendo, it hit a few speed bumps here and there. Especially when trying new ideas that didn't exactly work too well. Like with Sonic Unleashed, when he turns into a beast at night, and then of course the god-awful Sonic the Hedgehog 2006, which we can all agree had a ridiculous storyline, ridiculous missions, and just overall broken gameplay elements. So, yeah. This time they're trying for the more open world type of gameplay, similar to something out of Breath of the Wild with Legend of Zelda. But with that kind of game, you'd expect something like that to work. But this, I don't know, and I'm interested, very skeptical to see how this would play out. I mean, Sonic is about a hedgehog that runs around and collects rings. What more can you really do with that as an open world game? I'm really fascinated, but skeptical at the same time, and I'm a little bit worried but that's why I'm including it as an honorable mention spot. But hey, maybe Sega can learn from their mistakes and give us, finally, a really great 3D Sonic game, or maybe it'll end up sucking like the other ones did. So, who knows? But again, that's why I'm only including it as an honorable mention and not very high upon my list. And the number one anticipated game on my list for 2022... Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild 2. Yes, another one that I anticipated from last year, but come on, let's face it, people. The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, the first game, took so many years to make. Originally, it was going to be only for the Wii U, but they decided, yeah, let's make it for Nintendo's next generation console, the Nintendo Switch, to be able to play it at home and on the go, as well as the Wii U. And it worked out great. It was probably one of the best open adventure Zelda games of all time. The map was huge. Gameplay was great. It may not have been for everybody, you know, considering that you're more familiar with the older style of Zelda games, but this one took the necessary step to make it look and play great. And we can only hope for the same out of this one. I don't really know what the story and gameplay is going to be like. I've seen some sneak peeks and leaked footage and trailers, but I have faith in Nintendo to make a great game, and if it has to get pushed till next year or the year after, then so be it. I respect that. And I respect Nintendo for wanting to put the finishing touches to make a worthy sequel to one of the best Nintendo Switch games of all time, and obviously the best game of 2017, so that's why I'm anticipating it at number one. Don't let us down, Nintendo. I have 100% faith in you on this one. So, that's my list right there, people. Till next time, happy gaming.